But first up, he is an actor, playwright, and now author of the New York Times bestseller, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, Matthew Perry is over here. Matthew Perry, how are you? How are you? Good to see you, pal. It's been a while. All right, well. They still love you, as they should. First of all, congratulations. I heard you broke Amazon. Your book sold so many copies that they couldn't handle it. You're like the Taylor Swift of writing. <laughs> it seems like I am. I'm ahead of her book. That's, well. um, The amazing thing is, the first thing I want to say was, the amazing part is, I beat Bono in Ireland. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Well, I, I mean, it's a compelling book. I, I, I mean, I could not put it down. Uh, I feel like one of the big takeaways from the book is you like drugs. <laughs> <Do you know? laughs> I got that. I think that's clear okay. to say, yeah. And I just want to say that, before... That doesn't mean you read the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I know this is as a theme. Well, before we get too far, I just want to say, first of all, you look fantastic. Thank you. So it's, it's amazing to me. That, first of all, I'm so glad you're here. Plugging a book, because a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people did have you in the Deadpool. Yeah. Maybe you. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I uh, had a horrible accident about seven years ago. Um, I was given a 2% chance to survive the night. Right. They, didn't tell me that, obviously, because I wasn't really there, but they told my family. And uh, I was put on a thing called an ECMO machine, which you having read the book, you would know what that is. Yes. But it's a, it's, <laughs> no, I did. It's, I took notes. I underlined it. A, oh, no, I believe you. Um, <laughs> but they call that a Hail Mary. That's what they do right. when uh, they put you on an ECMO machine when it's a Hail Mary. And five people were on ECMO that night, and the other four died, and, and I somehow made it. Well, um, what God is a, is a fan. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know you're feeling about that, <laughs> um, but I, I, well, I know that... I'm a fan. Maybe I'm God. Okay. Uh, but, I, I know that uh, once you've referred to it as a force, and, you know, it, I, believe, I believe that. I believe that a higher power... There is a higher power. Right. I believe of. A well, very close relationship with him that's helped me a lot. And somebody's uh, on your side. Yeah. Um, everybody's on your side. Everybody's glad you're here. Yeah. And I, I must say, the human body, reading that book, and I did, it's amazing to me the paradox that the, the, it's so, so fragile the human, and also so resilient. It's, it's so easy to die. And also, it's kind of hard, which you proved. It's kind of hard to die. It, it can be, yeah. You tried. <laughs> no. You well, that's pushed the thing. It to I, the... I, never, I never tried. But I did so many drugs at certain times that I knew oh. that it could kill me. But I would do it. But I never, I never wanted to die. But the real thing for me and the troubles that I've had is that reality is an acquired taste. That's what I believe. <laughs> yeah, it's a great line. Yeah. And, I have had a great deal of time, a great deal of problems acquiring it. Right. And uh, it wasn't until I became, I, I became really safe. I felt really safe in my sobriety and really strong in my sobriety. And to tell you the truth, I am resilient and I am strong. Are, oh, my and, God. And, and you look fine. healthy. You look healthy. It's amazing. No, I feel very lucky that I'm someone who uh, could do drugs and yeah. still does drugs. Um, you and don't it, have any on you, do you? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't affect me that way. But, I mean, your stats, I mean, unbelievable. 6,000 AA meetings, took 55 Vicodins a day. This is like Joe DiMaggio with the 56-game yeah. hitting streak. I mean, yeah. no one's going to come up with these stats. No one's going to beat you on some of this stuff. Yeah, and some of the things that I went through to get that many pills a day, Oh, you know, my whole life was math. I mean, you know the story about... The open was, house? Yes. Can we talk about this? Sure, yeah. This is a... Because I remember the David Bowie song, like, Waiting for the Man. Right. This is where I, first, I was a teenager. First learned the concept 
of what addiction was, I think, from that song. Like, this is this big rock star, but he's waiting for the man. Yeah. Keith Richards has said the same. Doesn't matter how big you are, how famous you are, the drug dealer, you are his bitch. Yeah. You're waiting for the man. But you didn't wait for the man. You went to open houses and stole drugs from people's medicine cabinets. Such a better plan. Right? <laughs> I would, I would look in the paper and look at open houses <laughs> on Sundays, and I would go and I would go upstairs to the <laughs> medicine room, and if it was an elderly couple, I knew I'd hit it home. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then you look at the dates, you know, and if the yeah. dates are old and there's still a lot of pills, you can take a lot of them. <laughs> and then, and I'm telling, it's a horror story, and I'm telling it in kind of a funny way, but no, as I drove off, I was like, nobody's going to say, Chandler just stole drugs out of my <laughs> medicine garden? Exactly, yeah. And, and what kind of drugs were you looking for that they would have in these houses? Any that, kind of, I was any, an opiate right. guy, any so any kind of, kind of opiates were what I wanted. Um, I quit drinking. People would be surprised. Yeah, I haven't had a drink since 2005. Right. Uh, yeah. And, and that's because it just stopped working. I couldn't, I couldn't get drunk anymore. Right. So I, I turned it up and went to something that I but could you, feel. But you did do say that after your uh, colon problem, I mean, your colon exploded, right? Yeah. And you were in the hospital for five months. Yeah. Even after that, you wanted. Yeah. I mean, to get out of, to come out of an experience like that, if anyone doesn't understand how strong addiction is, I think that says it all, that you would spend five months in the hospital, lose your colon, and still, first thing out of the hospital is, hey, let's get hired. Out of the hospital. It happened in the hospital. I was, right. I was told that opiates had done this to me, and I literally said, I'd like some opiates to solve this problem, please. <laughs> And, um, you know, and got, and got them and then got home and was on a certain amount of opiates because I was lying about how much pain I was in. Right. And then it didn't become enough. And they said, no, you can't have any more. The drug dealer said yes. And I happened to live on the 40th floor of a building. So I had to go down 40 floors, meet the guy on the street, come back up. Mm. And I had a nurse, a sober companion, and they caught me every time I did this. Literally every time. They were like, give us the drugs that you just got. And I had to go to a rehab then. And the, the thing is, when you have something like a heart attack, and I've spoken to many people about this, you have a heart attack or you have some horrible death-defying accident that I have, you would think you'd be filled with gratitude. Mm -hmm. But that's not, you're pissed. You're right. angry. And at the things that you have to do in the future to get back to where you normally were. You're not filled with gratitude. You're like, wait a minute, I gotta be here for five months. You can't, the things inside my stomach are so broken up that you can't do surgery for a year and a half. And you're gonna have to have a colostomy bag, which is, you know, what? I'll leave you with a couple if you want. What? Do you have one now? No, no. Oh, you don't. So you, you had it, but it's I done. I had it, I had it removed, and that right. was a wonderful Right, so your colon's day. working again. Yes. All right. Well, we've talked about your ass. Let's talk about your dick. Sure. Uh, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I, bring, <laughs> I bring this up because you say you started in high school drinking heavily. Yeah. And you couldn't, like you thought you were impotent in high school. I couldn't keep it down in high school. Right. <laughs> well, that's kind of me now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, well, I'm sh well, again, human body's resilient. Yeah. You know, you lost the colon, you got that back. I'm yeah. sure the dick is on the way. Yeah. Hey. I'm not sure if you're hitting on me. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> well, I'm not hitting on you, but I am going to make a prediction about you. Okay. I think you are about to enter a very, very productive uh, period of your acting career. Because, I mean, we know you from the past. Okay, we love that. It's still on. It's the biggest hit still on television, Friends. But like now you're you're the mature guy. You're, you're at that age when like actors get really great, I think, because they've had all this experience, and you've had all this pain, which is bad in life but good in art. And 
I just see people using you in the next 20 years in a lot of really great roles. And I think you're going to do some amazing work. Do you see that before you feel? Thank you, yes. Uh, 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 a couple of good friends of mine have said your, your best work is to come. I do. I really believe that and because you have all this experience that you're going to use. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's not going to be Chandler. It's not going to be that. But it's going to be better stuff and more mature stuff and great yeah. movies. I found that in uh, the, just the talk show, talk show tour I've been on has been much more adult and... I used to come on these things and write jokes and like it's got to have right. kind of a moment of silence and I'm so awkward. Right. And this hasn't been that. I've no. been I've been quieter. I've waited to really think about what I want to say and and it's been all honest. Different. You know, I mean, you're telling us everything. I mean, you're telling us more than most people know about other people. Yeah. And you're doing it in a way that you know hopefully will help some other people, and I think it has. Yeah, and it's helped. It's helped me. Yeah. You know, right. um, no. getting to a point where. I was, I was safe, because you can't give away what you don't have. So if I'm afraid that I'm going to use in three weeks, I can't start helping people, right. you know, but now I feel... And you, do you, you don't still feel, you still feel the urge? No, I, I, right. I really don't. Oh, good. Yeah. All right, well, then don't come to the party. All right, Matthew Perry, great to see you, pal. And you're here.